You are tuned in to KPFA 94.1. I'm Tara Darabji reporting for Apex Express, coming to you with an Asian and Pacific Islander point of view from the Bay and around the world. Today, we'll be talking about a hot new collection of short stories, Love Inshallah, The Secret Lives, Love Lives of Muslim American Women. The book released on Valentine's Day is aimed to fire back at the stereotypes that surround Muslim women and give us a glimpse into the bittersweet, sometimes sexy, truth of love. We have with us in studio um, one of the authors, Leila Khan, whose story rerouted is in the anthology. Um, welcome to KPFA, Leila Khan. Thank you, Tara. Thank you so much for being with us. Um, I know that this um, the anthology is just doing so well. It hasn't even formally been, you know, released, and it's already sold out, and um you are one of the authors in it. And I just, you know, as a Muslim American woman living in the Bay Area, um, why was it really important for you to add your voice to the anthology? I think um, Muslim American women are portrayed in such a, um, I think, in an inaccurate way, as a lot of women often are. But I think they are largely desexualized. They are viewed as uh, not autonomous. Um, and they're sort of viewed as herded into um, an arranged marriage or shrouded. And these are stereotypes of Muslim women. And I think that a lot of Muslim women, um, one one part of the Muslim woman's experience that is not um, talked about a lot or discussed is when they step outside their faith or their ethnicity to find love. And so I wanted to explore that and add that to my story you know, to the co- to the collection. We're talking with Leila Khan. She's one of the authors. Um, in the, it's an amazing collection of short stories, Love, Inshallah, The Secret Love Lives of Muslim Women. And it, you sort of hit on um, that stereotype, really desexualizing Muslim um, women in general. And, I mean, one of the things I think that's really exciting about this anthology is it goes right in. You get to step in. It's sexy. It's it's very candid. Women go through everything from, you know, their first experiences. Um, and there was a lot... Um, There was a lot about sexuality. And so can you just talk with us a little more about sort of that, um, you know, that experience growing up um, both for yourself and also just the broader um, stereotypes that approach Muslim American women and Muslim women around the globe um, in terms of their sexuality? Right. I think that um, the religion... obviously like a lot of religions uh, prohibits premarital sex and um, a lot of uh, women struggle with that prohibition and and just the guilt um, of wanting to to move past that prohibition and I think um, you know sexuality is viewed at least in my experience of Islam growing up, was viewed as just something very dirty and for the woman certainly a burden and a source of shame. And so you, you know, you, that's, you know, one reason why the hair should be covered is because it's a very um, sexual um, aspect of the female, you know, attractiveness. So, um, you know, just whatever is attractive or sexual about a woman should be covered. So I think that that's something that Muslim women struggle with is this sense of shame, sin, burden related to something that is very beautiful and uh, very much a part of the human sort of progress and growth and development. So um, I think that that's, and a lot of women can't, uh, Muslim women don't, know where that they where they feel safe in expressing that exploration so i think that there's a lot of writing around that in this book we're talking with Leila Khan. She's the author of Rerouting. It's one of the short stories collected in Love, Inshallah, The Secret Love Lives of Muslim Women. You are tuned in to Apex Express, and I'm Tara Darabji on KPFA 94.1. And um, 
tell us a little bit more about your piece, Rerouting. It was, it definitely stood out in terms of the anthology. Um, it had, you know, it was it, it sort of ended on a harsh note a bit, and um, but a really ama- amazing piece. Talk to us a little bit about it. Well, I think, um, the, you know, I think I wanted to talk about when love doesn't pan out and when... Which is the reality of it many of the times. <laughs> yeah, and I think that people don't talk about just when love doesn't work out and when we're wrong and um, when we get burned. And I think that, um, you know, those those experiences that is being, you know, something breaking up or just the the devastation and and also around um faith and ethnicity which you don't see coming right so there are a lot of couples who from the get-go it's an issue and they sort of buy time or postpone the issue but in my case i you know it, i just never saw it coming and i think that that and it was super racist no i mean break it down in terms of <laughs> yeah. for our listeners um give us a sneak peek and a little preview <laughs> into your story right so you know, I was dating this Italian man for three years, and during those three years, nine eleven happened, and the war in Iraq started, and that was a huge shift too. Yeah. I think for the Muslim American community right. and Muslims all over the world. I mean, that's when. I mean, I know for me, that's when I really became brown in <laughs> terms of conceptions, and people, you know, would come up to you on the street, literally. Yeah, that's exactly right. I think I too um, had sort of put my faith in the on the back burner and didn't really identify as a Muslim for a while there. I mean, I, I let's say culturally Muslim, but not faith, you know, spiritually. And after 9-11, you, you just felt, oh, I, I have to defend this piece of me um, and I have to explain to the world this this that this faith is not all hijackers and terrorists. And, and so there was all this going on and never during that time did I sense that he was was buying into it, you know, buying into the perceptions of Muslims. And, you know, at the same time, um, an Irani woman, Iranian woman had won the Nobel Peace Prize. So I certainly didn't think, I didn't see it coming. But at the end, when, as the, the chapter, the story, you know, unfolds, at the end when we'd been in a long distance relationship for most of our three years and when I was going to move out to join him in Europe, um, we start, he started saying, you know, I want to get married in a church and I want my children raised Catholic and I want Italy to be our home base. And, and the reasons were because Islam didn't fit into it. And it was just, just came out of nowhere. And you guys were like engaged no yeah yeah i was i had quit my job um, in new york at a law firm and um i had booked my flight and canceled my lease and i was on my way and that's why the rerouting title because i had you know less than three weeks till i was supposed to go and um, i had to (laughs) reconfigure my plans basically dodge that bullet yeah (laughs) got out of that one at least yeah that's what people say that's what people say and so, I mean, I think this anthology, one of the real strengths in it is that you do just get to dive right in to the lives of Muslim American women all over the country from everything from, I think, I mean, your your story was, you know, an adult, more that mature, and then you get into some where there's just young women going through their first date, losing their virginity, right. everything, the gamut, and... um you know, one of the things um, I just want to read a little bit in terms of from the editors in their introduction um, from the foreword, and I just wanted you to respond to it as they talk about, um, and this is reading out of the text, that uh, Muslim women, we just can't seem to catch a break. We're oppressed, submissive, and forced into arranged marriages by big bearded men. Oh, and let's not forget, we're all hiding explosives under our clothes. <laughs> <laughs> the truth is, like most women, we're independent opinionated and the only thing hiding under our clothes are our hearts yearning for love and so i thought that was just a really beautiful introduction to this set of short stories and can you talk a little bit about um the universality of what comes through in terms of love and relationships in this collection as well yeah i think the search for love is just you know it really transcends race and class and and uh faith and so i think that i've had several 
most of my friends who've read this chapter and have started reading this anthology, you know, are not Muslim women. And they really can relate to a lot of these experiences. And in fact, um, part of my writing process was in a workshop where I had this piece reviewed or workshopped by eight different people and they were none of them were Muslim or brown for that matter and they really could relate to just the devastation and so in my story but also I think that speaks to the universality of love which is the search, the hope, the disappointment, the arrival, you know, so. And I think that, you know, you kind of bring up at a key point in talking about workshopping writing and how most of the women weren't brown. And I think in terms of when you look at professional writers, it is white women, um, if they are women. Um, yeah. I mean, white men obviously dominate the fields. And so to have a collection like this of women of color, Muslim, um, coming out and really getting intimate, breaking it down, you know, talking about first sexual experience and just getting to drop in there is really revolutionary. And I mean, the book is just, I want to say congratulations, doing <laughs> extremely well. Um, it's already sold out of its first print. Right. It's incredible. I think that um, people are curious about Muslims. And I think, um, yeah, I think people, and, and but their cur- the extent of that curiosity has been quite um, positively surprising. And I just think that, um, you know, this book really does demystify Muslim women. I th- I, th- I truly believe it, it. Oh, can you ever demystify a woman? <laughs> that's true. That's true. Especially her sexuality. I don't know. <laughs> that, that is a very good point. Everybody be out reading that. All right. I'm going to get it. I'm going to figure this one out. But can you imagine as um, a non-Muslim or non-brown and non-brown person, you know, you see a woman in a black complete chowder, you know, in yeah. Chicago. Or you see a woman in a headscarf and a long gown in New York. And you are going to wonder, like, what is that all about? And what, what, who are these women and how do they live? And I think this book um, lets you, gives you an insight into their lives um, through a theme that's very welcoming, which is love. Yeah. Love, inshallah. And um, if people, you know, we're almost out of time. If people want to get a copy, I know that there's events happening across the country. How can people connect? So we have a website. Uh, it's www.loveinshallah, which is L O V E I N S H A L A H dot com, and you can order it on Amazon. Um, and then the, there's a national tour, and you can see all the events on the website. There's just new events being added, um, you know, very often. And because we have 25 writers who are spread out throughout, uh, spread throughout the U.S., we have events nationally. Well, thank you so much, Leila Khan, for joining us here at KPFA. I'm Tara Darabji, and we are reporting for Apex Express, coming to you with an Asian and Pacific Island point of view from the Bay and around the world. Thanks, Tara. Yeah, thank you.